In this video, I want to give you an overview of everything that you can find in a playbook. So a playbook starts with a couple of dashes. That is in case you are uh, embedding the playbook code into something else, like a web page. It's easier to recognize. Uh, next, you will have a play definition. And that play definition starts with a name. Uh, after the name, you get some parameters. And next, you will get the tasks. And that is basically what a playbook is all about. It's a series of tasks. And each of these tasks is going to be identified by its indentation. So you need a dash, uh, and then you start name uh, again, followed by the name that you want to assign to that task. Now, within a task, what you are going to call is a module. So we have seen modules in uh, ad hoc commands, but modules are going to be called from playbooks as well. So the module is going to be called with all of its different arguments, and these different arguments are going to be uh, recognized by their indentation as well. So argument one and argument two. Now in a playbook, obviously you can have multiple tasks, as you will see shortly. And then the story just repeats itself. Now a playbook is called a playbook because it can also contain multiple plays. So if you have multiple plays, you will start the structure right here again uh, by identifying uh, a second name, uh, followed by the tasks that are going to be executed in that specific play. So the story just repeats itself. Uh, you have your modules, your module arguments, and so on. And that is what the playbook is looking like. When you are going to work at a playbook, the thing that you should take care of is that you respect the YAML syntax. Uh, YAML syntax is not hard to learn. The only thing that is important is the indentation. Do not ever use tabs in YAML. Use spaces as indentation. Typically, uh, two spaces will do it for you. And then you again can get a nice overview uh, of your playbook that looks like this. Now let's explore some more playbook details. All right, so we now have a little bit of an understanding about playbooks, but let's discuss why we want to use playbooks. So we have seen ad hoc commands. Ad hoc commands can be used to run one or a few tasks. They are convenient to test or to run an occasional command when a complete managed infrastructure hasn't been set up yet. Uh, but where you really want to go to is to an environment where you are using Ansible playbooks. In Ansible playbooks, uh, you can easily run multiple tasks against managed hosts in a scripted way. In playbooks, as we have just seen, you can include one or multiple plays, and each of these plays uh, can run multiple tasks. And in the tasks, different modules are used to perform the actual work. Playbooks are written in YAML and uh, they will have the YML or the YAML extension. The extension doesn't really matter uh, as long as the playbook is uh, recognizable as YAML format. So what is this YAML all about? Well, YAML is yet another markup language according to some, and according to others it stands for YAML ain't markup language. So what it stands for? I don't care. Uh, as long as we do understand what it's all about. It's an easy to read format to structure tasks and items that need to be created. In YAML files, items are using indentation with white spaces to indicate the structure of the data. And these white spaces are very important. Data elements at the same level should have the same indentation. So if you have multiple tasks, each of these tasks should start at the same level. Child items are indented more than the parent items. So a child item can be an argument uh, to a module, and that will be indented uh, below the task. There is no strict requirement about the amount of spaces that should be used, but two is common. So I would advise you to use that. Now here you can see an example of what this playbook uh, will look like. So in this playbook, we have uh, the dash, dash, dash. That's the standard way uh, to open a playbook. And to close the playbook, you should have dot, dot, dot. You will notice that uh, the dot, dot, dot is often omitted. Uh, and that is because it's not really necessary. I mean, if Ansible reaches the end of the playbook, it will just stop. 
Uh, the dash 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 and the dot 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 are particularly interesting uh, when the playbook is embedded in something else, like an HTML page. Then we have the name of the first and only play, which is deploy vs FTPD. Uh, in a play, you would typically specify to which hosts it applies. In this case, that is ansible2.example.com. And then we get a list of tasks. You can see there's three of them, and three different modules are called. Uh, the YUM module, the service module, and the copy module. You can also see that each of these tasks uh, has its own name. This name is pretty important because that is what you see when you run the playbook. So if anything goes wrong, it is important that you can identify where it goes wrong. And that is where the name is going to help you. You can also see that in this playbook, arguments are specified. And for each of the modules, uh, I am using argument specification in a different way. So we have yum colon name equals vs FTPD, which, which is the argument directly after the name of the module. We have the service module, which is followed by name is vs FTPD and enabled is true. So these are two arguments to one module specified on the same line. I have to say that uh, this syntax usage is not really the recommended way. The recommended way is to do it, as you can see in the copy module, where you can see content uh, and destination and force and mode, which are arguments to the copy module, uh, which are listed below uh, the name of the module. Uh, and it's easy to identify the different arguments by its indentation. Now, once you have written the playbook, uh, you can run it. I will shortly show you, but let's first discuss what is going to happen. So you can use ansible-playbook, followed by the name of the playbook, to run it. Uh, so ansible-playbook is uh, the generic command to run playbooks, whereas ansible is what you use to run ad hoc commands. You should notice that the successful run requires the inventory and the become parameters to be set correctly. And it also requires access to an inventory file. So you would always have access to the, uh, the ansible.cfg as well as the inventory file. And the output of the Ansible playbook command will show you what exactly has happened. In general, playbooks are idempotent, which means that running the same playbook again should lead to the exact same result. And notice that there is no easy way to undo changes made by a playbook. So if you want to undo it, you need to write a dedicated undo playbook. Now let's have a look at uh, an example playbook. So here is the playbook, which is basically the playbook that we have just seen. Before I'm going to run it, let's have a look at the arguments of the copy module. There's four of them. Content is uh, welcome to this FTP server. Oops, there's a typo. That's not really nice. So let's make that lowercase. And the destination is var FTP pub readme. Uh, this is interesting because the copy module in this case is not copying a file, but it's copying a line to a file. Uh, and that also works. Force no means that if the file already exists, we are not going to overwrite it. And mode is a permission mode. And everything else is pretty obvious. You can see that yum is going to install uh, VSFTPD and the service module is going to enable VSFTPD. Now, if you want to run it, we need Ansible Playbook followed by vsftpd.yaml. And there we can see the play in action. So what is it doing? Well, we can see it starts with deploy vsftpd, uh, which is the name that we have used in the, in the playbook, uh, on top of the playbook. Then there is the task gathering facts. Now, what is this gathering facts? Well, Ansible is working with facts, and facts are discovered about managed hosts. Basically, they are parameters of hosts that are going to be managed by Ansible. And fact gathering is the default part of running a playbook, because you can use these facts in conditionals. We'll talk about that later. And then we can see the different tasks. Install VSFTPD, enable VSFTPD, and create a readme file. And all of these tasks uh, are indicating a change, which means that something has changed. And that is exactly uh, what we would expect to be happening. Then there's the play recap, uh, in which we can see how successful this play was. OK is 4, means that four tasks have been uh, executed uh, correctly. Uh, 
There is the fact gathering, which is included as a, as a task as well, and that is why you see the number four and not the number three, which you might have expected. Then we see change is three, which is indicating that three different tasks have changed something on the managed host. And unreachable, failed, skipped, rescued, ignored does not apply here. Now let me run this playbook again. Now, as expected, uh, VSFTPD is already installed. Uh, it's already uh, started. The README file already exists. So we see a slight difference. And the slight difference is that we don't see a change now, but we see all of the tasks indicated as OK. So the managed host already uh, matches the desired state as defined in the playbook. So there was no need to do anything anymore.